Hey guys, we're here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway and we can't get in, but we're going to be out here talking with you all about their experiences and hopefully have a few driver interviews on the way. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys later. Let's go! A lot of drivers came up through Indy Lights and uh, wrote to Indy. Your story is different though. You came up through GP3 and other forms of European and Japanese racing. How did you get to test at Mid Ohio? So it was it was tough to to be here. Um, I thought that would I had to stop racing in 2017. So I was at home and I thought, oh man, they, my racing career ended. But then I received a call from Japan um, to get a, a drive in Formula 3. We had a really successful year, and then I did Super Formula last year. was, again, really successful. And since day one, I was telling Honda, I was telling my team, and everybody I saw, like, I wanted to go to IndyCar. Um, and then I was lucky enough that um, Team Go, which was my team in Japan, um, had contacts uh, and past relationships with Elcoin, and they said, OK, maybe we can try and organize a test. And I was like, oh, really? Um, so, yeah, they they said, OK, Alex, come to America. We will do a seat and you'll drive one day in mid-Ohio. Um, that was awesome. We showed the speed that we had inside uh, us and we were capable of. And then we just were working all Christmas, all October, December. Every day I was working and calling Dale, trying to get the ride this year, and, and we ended up having the ride. Can you tell us how you got started on racing? Was your family, like, really big on it? There's a small go-karting track uh, in between my school and my house, what used to be my house. So I was passing there two times a day. So imagine as a kid, you, you just want to go there and, and try to, to race a car, a go-kart. So when I was four and a half, I think, I, I told my parents to just try and, and I wanted to drive a rental car. But I was so short that I couldn't fit in it. So when I was five, they, they bought, all the family bought like a really small go-kart. Um, and then we started. So my family didn't like motor racing. Only my dad, he was, he was not a super big fan, but he liked uh, Formula One and, and cars. Um, and then now everybody likes uh, the sport, of course. I know everyone's been asking about uh, you and Alonso because you're both Spanish. But I read that you didn't grow up watching him every weekend. While focused on your own career, I wonder who did you look up to? Who was it that made you want to step into your race car? Ah, oh, that's a tough question. Um, there was, n I started racing when I was five, so I was not looking at TV and enjoying the races. Um, I think I wanted to be a driving before I was watching TV or Heroes um, in Formula One or something like that. So. It was just, I think, the passion between my dad and me and also the family that wanted to race. And then I grew up watching Schumacher with Ferrari when he was winning uh, the, all the world championships. So, yeah, growing as a kid, I think if you see uh, a, a winning Ferrari, you're going to cheer for that Ferrari. Um, as le at least that's what I feel. So I was cheering for Schumacher. Um, and yeah, Alonso is good that he's here, but... It's, I was never cheering for him. You have a car that is capable of winning on Sunday. If however you find yourself racing Alonso and you get the best of him, what's it going to be like back in Spain for your friends and your family? Yeah, for sure that's going to be special. Um, we have a really strong car, as you said, so I need to try and get the advantage from that and try to, to finish as top as possible. Um, and being on top of Fernando, a good thing about Fernando is that he attracts all the media uh, in Spain, which is it's normal. He's a two times world champion in F1, so um, he deserves it. Um, but if we are able to get a good result in front of him, I think more people is going to allow to to see what we're doing here. Um, and for sure, my family is going to be super proud and super happy. Yeah, draw them into this for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to, I'll try to. You seem to put a lot of thought into your helmet for the Indy 500. Was it something you designed, or like how did, how, did it, how did it come to be? So, 
I never thought I could be an IndyCar driver, and I never thought I could be in Indy 500 and making the show. Um, it's like a dream for me. Not like a dream, it's a dream for me. Um, so being here, I wanted to show the fans and everybody that I'm not from America, but I'm so proud of being here. And what I wanted is to have my design with something uh, with the American flag, just to open to all the fans and hopefully get attract more fans. And then the designer, uh, the Veneratio, um, it's from Florida. Um, he was like, oh, I can make a mix between your design and American flag, but maybe you like this. And I was like, oh, yeah, I like this. Cool, because aren't like some parts of it matte and other parts are uh, gloss? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have, um, so I have stars, big stars right here. Um, they are gloss. I have some logos from Indy 500. Um, they are gloss as well, and all the rest is matte. Looks, looks really nice. So, by the way, congratulations on making your first IndyCar podium at Road America. Rookies always want to do good in the series quick, but it's not easy to do. What are your expectations coming into the season, and have you surprised yourself? Thank you. It's been a tough year um, because we didn't have as many... We didn't have preseason tests. Um, we didn't have as many practices as we used to have. So it made it really hard for me because I didn't know Road America before... Uh, going on Saturday and the same Saturday I was racing and we were on the podium so I think that was a hard that was hard um, but that was that all the weekend worked out really well for the team I think the team did an amazing job trying to give me a really fast and easy car to drive and we also were really good on on strategy so that's why we made it to the to the podium which is amazing in IndyCar and surprised yes i am surprised that it came so quickly um it was my second road course race which is like yeah i just started um i think the oval and the road course are like a separate championships for me this year um and for me the road course is where i can really push and and try to show everybody what i'm capable um and we're with a really small team so it's amazing um how the team worked and how the team was able to put such a good car for for the low resources we have. Do you see yourself in IndyCar as long as possible? Yeah, of course, I would love to. Um, at the moment, I, I don't have a contract for next year yet. Yeah, at the moment, I'm looking to have a, a car for next year, um, not about like 10 years. Um, what I want is to is to have my career here in, in the US, here in, in IndyCar. I think it's a great championship. Um, it's really good for the fans as well, um, just because of competition. And, and we are so tight inside the field. Um, you don't know who's going to win on Sunday, and which is amazing. It's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I would love to, to be a Scott Dixon and be 20 years from now winning five championships. I, I would, that would be my dream for sure. How long have you been in Austin now? Before COVID, were you able to explore places like the Alamo Theater, Austin City Limits, or even Coda? No, because I think I moved to Austin maybe two weeks before St. Pete. Um, so I got the apartment, um, the vet set up, and then three or four days later, I had to fly to Chicago to get everything ready for St. Pete, and then I flew together with the team. So... After that, I went directly to Costa Rica to get my visa sorted and then back to Spain because all the COVID was going on. So um, prior to COVID, I had like no experience on, in Austin. So I'm, I'm waiting to, till all this thing ends and, and I'm able to enjoy um, as much as possible. Hey guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the Indy 500. I know I did. That was so amazing to watch. Congrats to Kuma Sato. And wherever you are, Hope you enjoyed it. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you smash the subscribe button, like, and share. Ah, goodbye.